Today in our 2016 Dodge Journey, we'll be installing the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118536. Alright, here's what our wiring looks like once it's been installed. As you can see, we have an adequate length of wire here to hook up to our trailer electrical connection nice and easy. It ends right next to where our drawbar for our hitch is inserted. This gives us our simple four pole flat that gives us all of our required lighting functions that we need by law. So when we're not using it, we have this nice dust cover that's built onto it, clips over like so. Here's a trick though, if you want to secure your wiring so it doesn't get snagged on something, wrap that dust cover around your safety chain loop on your hitch, and then you can clip it back in here like so. And it's easily accessible for whenever you need it and then you don't have to worry about getting snagged on something. All right, here's what a wiring kit comes with. We have our module box here. This will give us an isolated signal for our trailer wiring from our vehicle lighting circuit. That way, if our trailer has a short or wants to backfeed any voltage into our vehicle, it won't cause any damage to our expensive electrical components inside of our vehicle. This wiring harness is made to work with the Dodge Journeys that have LED tail lights from the factory. If you have incandescent light bulbs, this won't work for you. We have other options available on our website for you. Right here, we have our T-Connect fit connectors right here. This will go over to our right side to give us our right side turn signal. Right here, we have our left side connectors for our left side turn signals. Then this smaller one here, this will go on our left side of the vehicle. This will give us our tail light function and our brake light function for our trailer. Then we have our industry standard four pole flat connector to give us all the lighting functions that our trailer needs as required by law. Coming off our converter box, we have an input here which will be ran directly to the battery using this included spool of wire and our hardware kit, which gives us a fuse holder and a fuse. So this module will be powered directly from the battery so it doesn't cause any strain on your electrical components inside the vehicle. Then we have this white wire here, which is our ground wire. And we'll attach that with the self-tapping screw that's included in our hardware kit. And we'll begin our installation by opening our hatch so we can get access to our taillights. Now there's two plastic clips right here over our tail light. Use a trim panel tool to pry it off or a flathead screwdriver, whichever you have. Okay. Then we'll grab our tail light assembly, pull it out towards us. We'll unclip our turn signal bulb here and undo our tail light and brake light connector here for the LED section. And now we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Now we'll take our green wire connector for our passenger side or our right side turn signal. We'll drop it down through the spot behind our bumper cover on the driver's side. And it'll fall straight down the floor. We're doing this because our, our box is designed to be mounted on the driver's side of the vehicle. Once we have that done, we'll drop down our four pole flat trailer connector as well. Just wanna do one at a time, that way they don't get tangled. Now we'll take one end of our black wire spool, strip off some of the insulation, put a yellow butt connector on it, crimp it on down. slide it over the black wire that's on our module. Crimp it on down too. And then we'll wrap this in some electrical tape. We'll grab the other end of our black wire and we'll feed it on down behind our bumper cover just like we did the other wires. Now we'll take the male end of our smaller connector here. This is for our tail lights and our brake lights. And we'll plug it in the female end that exists on the vehicle. 
until it snaps in place. We'll grab our yellow wire here. This is for our left turn signal. We'll take the male end right here and we'll plug it into the female end on the vehicle. Push it in, pull it back, make sure it's secure. Once that is, we're good. Now we'll take the provided self-tapping screw, place it over our ground wire here, and go into sheet metal on the body. Once that's nice and secure, we'll have a good grounding connection. Okay, once we're grounded right here, we'll take our module box, remove the double-sided protective tape off the back so we can apply it firmly to the body of our vehicle. We'll stick it down behind our bumper cover to come in at an angle to clear. This wasn't a good enough surface in this area right here to stick it there. We needed something a little bit more flat. So that's why we went right here. All right, now we can reinstall our driver's side tail light assembly. Plug in our connector here for our tail light and a brake light. Hear that snap in nice and solid. Then we'll plug in our turn signal here. And clips in nice and tight. All right, now we'll tuck our connector down here behind the bumper cover. And we'll slide our tail light into position, making sure our guide pins go in the appropriate holes. I'll push it back in place. And we'll reinstall our clips that hold it in position. Now we're back on over at the passenger side. We're gonna drop down something behind our bumper cover that we can use to pull our wire up. So use a piece of airline tubing we have laying around. You can use a coat hanger or anything that you have that's long enough and flexible enough to go down through there. As you can see, it comes out of our bumper down there. We'll raise our vehicle on up and feed our wire on over to that side. Work it behind our bumper cover and up over our exhaust. Now we'll connect it with our pull wire. So just we'll tape our green wire on up to our pull wire. Okay, so we'll pull our connector on up. We can remove our pull wire now. Plug our mail in here into our vehicle end. So it clicks on, reconnect our turn signal connector, and reconnect the factory LED connector here for our tail lights and stop light. And now we'll slide our tail light back in. Making sure our guide pins go in the holes. Okay, with that done, we can now close our hatch, go back underneath the vehicle, and run our power wire to the front. All right, when routing your power wire, you want to make sure to avoid any sources of heat or moving parts. So keep it away from the exhaust, keep away from any steering or suspension components, and you'll be okay. We have our power wire over our exhaust hanger here, goes up and over our rear subframe, and then comes out to the driver's side of our gas tank here. Then we follow through this bracket that supports our parking brake cable. Go behind the parking brake cable adjuster right here. And then we have it zip tied to the cable. Again, by this bracket here for the cable. Here. And towards the end of our cable where it goes inside the vehicle. We drop down our pull wire from the top and tape the end of our power wire to that. Now we'll go back up underneath the hood and pull our wire into the engine bay. See, our vehicle has a battery that's located in the wheel well, and we can hook our power wire up to that if we wanted to, or we could use the jump start terminal on the vehicle, which is what we're going to use. That's located right here next to the fuse box, which is on the driver's side next to the air filter. So we'll slide this cover open. Now we'll grab our fuse holder here, we'll open the dust cover, 
As you can see, there's no fuse inside, so it's safe to make our connection. We'll cut the loop in half, giving us two ends. Now we'll strip back both ends of our fuse holder. On one end, we'll place a ring terminal. And we will crimp that on down. On the other end, we will install a butt connector. Crimp that down as well. Okay. Measure off about how much of our black wire we'll need. Right there will be good. Cut off and remove the excess. Strip back our insulation. Place our other end of the rebut connector that goes to our fuse holder over it. Crimp it on down. And we'll wrap our butt connector up in some electrical tape just to help protect it from the elements. Now we'll take a 15 millimeter socket and remove this nut right here. Set the nut aside. Place our ring terminal on over that stud. Reinstall the nut. Now we'll install our 15 amp fuse into our fuse holder. Push it on down and close our dust cap on over. Now one thing I would like to do here, additional to what we're doing, just make sure our wire doesn't fall down is take a zip tie here for a fuse holder and secure it to this wire loom right here. This way if we ever need to gain access into our fuse box here we don't have to worry about this wire or fuse holder that we just installed getting in the way of that. All right now we're going to go ahead and test our functions before we hook up to our trailer. I already have our headlights on and as you can see our tail light function is working. We have left turn signal we have right turn signal, and we will have functioning brake lights on our trailer too. So we're ready to hook up to our trailer now. And that completes our installation of the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118536 on our 2016 Dodge Journey. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.